Recess, a time to play and be free. It's almost every kid's favorite part of the school day. But these are no ordinary children, and this is no ordinary school. This is a rehabilitation home for former child slaves, girls and boys just like 13-year-old Kusum. Kusum says she was sold to brokers for the equivalent of a mere $14 and forced to work in Nepal's carpet factories every day from 3 a.m. till 7 p.m., with very few breaks in between. They told me if I didn't work hard enough on the looms, they would shock me with electric current. And they tried to, she says quietly. But Kusum is one of the lucky ones. Because for every rescue child like her, there are children like these. We took hidden cameras into one of the countless factories as we looked for carpets in the back alleys of Kathmandu. Though we couldn't tell their exact ages, some of these children appeared to be under 10. And the factory owner seemed completely at ease that foreigners were in his shop and that we were seeing that almost all his workers were children. He proudly showed us their handiwork and even bragged about how fast their young hands could make carpets. But there are factories in Nepal that don't employ child labor. This inspector works for Goodweave, an organization working to ensure that handmade carpets that carry their label are not made with child labor. Employing children under 14 is illegal in Nepal, and on this inspection, none are found. But when they are, the factory is penalized. The children are rescued and taken to homes like these. Goodweave, in turn, agrees to sponsor their education until they reach grade 10 or turn 18. Ganga Bhattarai is a counselor who works to help rehabilitate these children. She says because of the abuse, many of them arrive here severely traumatized. At the beginning, they, uh, they, uh, they don't have the confidence. They say that I can't read and write. No, no, I can't. Uh, slowly and gradually, they build up the trust. Then I can, then I say that you can. For many of these children, this is the very first time they have set foot in a classroom. But their education doesn't stop here. Sanruki was also rescued by Goodweave and now attends one of the top private schools in Kathmandu. Forced to work in the carpet factory from the time she was only eight, like Kusum, she says, she was subjected to abuse when the factory owners felt she had fallen behind in her work. And in first time, I was not able to the weave draw, so they, they used to beat me with the uh, iron stick. So they used to call me, I used to cry. There was a time, she says, when she couldn't imagine that she had any future at all. But now... 